Hello, wonderful person. This is Anton, and let me ask you a question. Do you think we can tell just by looking at the star how old it possibly is? Well, as you can probably imagine, and as you can probably tell from the title of this video, uh, today we're going to be talking about a technique that scientists use to measure how old stars are, and it's actually a relatively accurate technique that was only invented a few years ago. Today we're going to be talking about gyrochronology, a scary sounding name, but nevertheless a really awesome technique that essentially uses the star's spin to discover how old it is. Welcome to What The Math. So let me actually first uh, use this Kepler-186 system here to kind of just give you a brief overview of what's going on. Um, first of all, when stars are born, they normally uh, spin relatively fast because of the gas collapse that creates a lot of momentum as it collapses. As they age though, um, they actually slow down and there's a very, very interesting reason behind this. As you can see from the star here, it's actually actively releasing a lot of flares, a lot of gas that basically becomes what's known as a solar wind. At the same time, Every star, um, well, with maybe some exceptions that we haven't discovered yet, but I would say every star out there is also uh, magnetic, it has magnetic field. Uh, the solar flares that stars release are also um, affected by magnetism, so what happens in the end is that as the solar wind expands from the star, the actual magnetic field kind of catches onto it and slowly, very, very gently slows down the star over time. So with, you know, billions of years of existence, stars actually slow down quite dramatically. They go from maybe something like this to maybe something like this. And because of this, we can actually establish a relationship between the star's rotation and its age, specifically using stars like our sun and several other stars for whom we've determined both the rotation speed and also the age using some other parameters. Now, no, there's actually several techniques to establish star's age, but gyrochronology, as of today, is one of the most accurate ones. And it's, on, it's the only technique we can actually use for stars that are usually by themselves, what are known as the uh, standalone stars. And it's especially accurate for uh, cooler or colder stars. And so here, um, a typical star uh, with, in the main sequence as long as we can actually determine its rotation, we can sort of put it on um, on a graph or on a plot that kind of looks similar to what you see here. This is a, p a paper called Gyrochronology for Main Sequence Field Stars. Um, and then using the, the estimates that we've discovered, predict the age of a star within about 15% uh, margin of error, which is actually very accurate. The question is then, well, okay, that's all cool and all, but how would you even determine the actual rotation of the star? It sounds like a pretty daunting task. It sounds extremely difficult. And I guess it is because, well, first of all, okay, let's let's pretend we're looking at the star from like really far away, essentially from Earth. Right now, not only can I barely see the star, there's absolutely no way for me to see how it's rotating. How would I be able to even see it? Now, with powerful enough telescopes, sometimes you can actually see the um, dark spots that are produced by magnetism, and you can actually see them traverse across the star's surface. But usually that's sort of um, an, a bonus. It, it, you don't always get to see them. As a matter of fact, not all stars even have them. So in that case, what do we do? How do scientists actually discover the rotation speed of a typical star? And the technique for this is actually pretty brilliant. Um, so first of all, um, let me briefly tell you that most stars have what's known as a, a spectrum. They have a an absorption spectrum that you can see right here based on the elements that are within the stars. So for example, hydrogen will produce a spectrum that looks like this, and it has this band right here that's always unique to hydrogen. Um, helium will have several bands here, and, and so on and so forth. But what we really care about are these bands right here, the actual thickness of these bands. If we were to actually look at them a little bit more directly, we would see something like this. Basically a, a curve that um, is kind of gentle depending on which part of the spectrum we're looking at. Now, when a star rotates, when a star spins, which I'm going to try to create here, um, and we're looking at it from Earth, 
one side of the star, this side here, is actually retrieving from us and one side is moving toward us. And if you remember anything about how we actually measure things um, using telescopes, there is something called Doppler shift effect. And uh, this Doppler effect applies here as well. So this side is actually going to be slightly um, in a lower frequency region because it's redshifted. However, this side is moving toward us, so it's going to be in a higher frequency, it's going to be blue shifted. And so in effect, what we get is we get a, a kind of a stretch of the um, absorption spectrum. So we get something that used to be like this, but now it looks more like this. And using the difference between these two, we can actually establish how fast this star is moving because what is essentially happening here is that a non-rotating star will always produce the same spectrum and a rotating star moving at a certain speed will always produce um, another kind of a spectrum. And having measured quite a lot of these different spectra and established the actual d visual difference in the spectrum produced, we've now uh, built these tables and graphs where we can pretty easily and pretty confidently um, determine how fast a certain star is spinning. So like, for example, a star that's spinning relatively similar to our sun, in other words, our sun uh, could actually take up to a month to rotate just once around its axis, but another star that's similar to our sun might be actually um, taking a lot less, like for example, two weeks. And so its spectrum is going to be more bro broadened, it's going to be more flat, and we can establish that this particular star is definitely a lot younger because it's similar to our sun, but seems to be spinning faster. And so this is what gyrochronology is in essence. Um, now, the actual effect itself that you see right here is actually called line broadening uh, because the lines become more broad. And so this starts looking more like this. And this is the primary way for scientists to establish the rotation of the star. And some scientists can then use this to establish the age of a star as well, relatively accurately, as I mentioned before. So gyrochronology is an exceptional uh, technique. It's actually extremely useful and it's definitely going to advance even more in the coming years. Uh, but most importantly, it actually allows us to uh, really, really accurately determine a lot of the star's parameters, uh, especially for those stars that are completely by themselves and have nothing near them. So it's kind of hard to predict when they were created. Because, you know, if a star is, for example, a part of a, some sort of a cluster, then we can usually determine the age of most stars here because they usually have relatively the same age. They were All of them were, for the most part, born at the same time. However, a lonely star, if we were to start, find a star somewhere completely by itself, would be really difficult to um, analyze, specifically find its age. So if I were to just jump into a random star here, and to try to find out its age, the only technique so far that does it really well is really gyrochronology. And that's basically if we measure the rotation of the star and then compare it to stars that we already know. So that's kind of how this works. It's a very brilliant technique. And on this note, I'm going to end this video. Anyway, thank you so much for watching and please subscribe if you still haven't. Maybe even share this video with someone who enjoys watching space videos and wants to learn through video games and potentially maybe even support this channel on Patreon because it does help me a lot. Thank you guys, I'll see you tomorrow, we'll come back tomorrow to learn something else, space out, and as always, bye-bye.